Hey, what's up guys? Crypto Clay here, and today we're going to be talking about Bitcoin. And uh, while this video is going to, you know, discuss cryptocurrencies all encompassing, um, Bitcoin is going to be the topic of today. And the reason that we're going to be talking about Bitcoin is because, uh, as you can see on a lot of these charts here on CoinGecko, um, the the market really follows what Bitcoin does, and I think it will continue to do so for a lot longer. Now, eventually that might change and something might take the place of Bitcoin, but I don't know if we're going to see that anytime soon. So just wanted to take a look at CoinGecko here. This is something that I used to do in a lot of my videos where I would just go over uh, the top 10 cryptos, take a look at where they're at today and their last seven day chart right here. As you can see, Bitcoin has taken a little bit of a slump here, but today it started picking back up a little bit of momentum. We saw a $42,000 Bitcoin last week towards the end of the week and already today we're looking at close to 51,000 so a pretty nice price rise in just a few days of course with the cryptocurrency market you're always going to see volatility like this this is nothing new for a lot of experienced traders in this market uh, even hodlers have seen their fair share of price swings and they just keep holding and you know everybody's everybody's strategy is going to be different as far as investing whether you're a hodler whether you're a swing trader whether you're a day trader which day trading isn't really possible in the cryptocurrency market because the market never closes um, but if you are a so-called day trader or you know you uh, trade every now and then it, it doesn't matter um, if you're a staker however you decide to to invest in this market is definitely your call but um, we all are affected by these price swings some a lot more than others but that is today's coin gecko look here is the crypto fear and greed index so right now we're at 16 which is extreme fear and last month we saw a high of 71 which was greed um, i zoomed out here to show as far back as we could see back to february of 2018 but I wanted to show you guys where we're currently sitting. So right now we're at about 16 in July of this year. We were at, let's see, can I get to it? We were less than that. We were at about 10 on the fear and greed index. And then we all know what happened after July, but we fell again to a low of about 22 or so and then we saw a new all-time high so there's a lot to be said about the fear and greed index however it can also um you know not show the entire picture sometimes so take that with a grain of salt but understand where we're at right now in the market we're currently in a spot where a lot of people are afraid to buy in and usually that is a good time to actually be making purchases a lot of people make the most money during bear markets and that also occurs when there is a huge price dip like we saw over the past week people tend to make good deals of profit after afterwards so again keep that with a grain of salt but just another thing that i wanted to take a look at 
Here on the cryptocurrency subreddit, somebody posted something titled, It's insane how people can complain about crypto price action when Grandpa Bitcoin the past year is up more than the S&P 500 the past five years. The reason that I wanted to show you guys this was to put a little bit of perspective on where we're at in the market. Now, if you just put money into this market, then you are probably... <laughs> scratching your head or freaking out thinking oh my gosh what did i just do and that's totally understandable i think anybody that is in the crypto space knows exactly where you're at right now but if you just stick around kind of let it ride out then eventually you'll be one of the ones that takes a look at things like these market dips and views them as um, nothing more than uh, another dip. And that's kind of how I take a look at these things now. I don't let these things get to my head. There are a lot of people that say that they love these market dips. That is completely false. I don't know of anybody that actually loves these dips unless you are the best swing trader out there. Um, I just don't see anybody that actually loves these dips. Uh, but, you know, still, let's put this into a little bit of perspective. A year ago, in 2020, we saw Bitcoin below $10,000. Today, Bitcoin is above $50,000. So put that into perspective. That's a huge price rise that a lot of people didn't foresee. There were some that did. But I think there were a lot more people when the price was low saying that we were going to stay in this bear winter forever. And that's just not the case. So keep your heads up. Um, keep, keep your eye on the prize, guys. Another thing I wanted to show you guys is this Bitcoin having countdown. I can't believe it, but we are already... Um, about we're over a third of the way there to the next having count countdown, which is just insane to think about because it feels like yesterday we just had a Bitcoin having, but I guess it really has been that long. So another thing to keep in mind is that every time there's a Bitcoin having, the the supply gets lowered. And the price usually goes up with the supply going down. It's your basic supply and demand economics. So very, very cool stuff there. Another thing that isn't directly tied to Bitcoin, but definitely the cryptocurrency network as a whole, is India changes its voice on cryptocurrencies and we'll be regulating it instead of banning it altogether. There was a lot of fear in the market there that India was going to be banning cryptocurrencies because they couldn't get a handle on it. But that's not going to be the case. They're going to be regulating instead of completely banning these digital assets, which is really great news for the entire cryptocurrency market as a whole. So this video got posted on the cryptocurrency subreddit and um, I have the link there for you to see if you want to take a look at it. But basically what this video is, is a video showing off how Bitcoin is thriving in El Salvador and how people in small businesses are using it to uh, sell their items in their shops there. and. These, these businesses are actually doing better now that people have the ability to spend Bitcoin at these shops. So a really, really cool story there that I wanted to show you guys. And that one is directly tied to Bitcoin. Another article that I wanted to show you guys today was on Cointelegraph, and it's titled Grayscale Finds That Over 25% of U.S. Households Surveyed Currently Own Bitcoin. 
Now, you could look at that one of two ways. You could say that adoption isn't here yet, so um, you know this pullback in the market shows that adoption is not here and it won't be here for some time. And you know you could look at it that way, but I tend to look at it glass half full. 25% is a lot higher than what we saw in the last major bull run of 2017. I, I think it was somewhere around 5 to 7% of households surveyed owned Bitcoin. So that is really exciting to see, but we still have a long way to go. There are a lot of people that own stocks and other assets that generate wealth that don't currently own Bitcoin in their portfolio. And that's totally fine. It's their decision on what to invest in. But I really think that within the next 10 to 20 years, that number is going to go all the way to 50 to 75% of households owning Bitcoin. So keep your eye on that number and let's move on. So something that I wanted to show you guys, just to give both perspectives of where we're at in the market, um, Bitcoin whales move fresh coins to exchanges in repeat of behavior before 42K Bitcoin price dip. So essentially what this article on Cointelegraph is talking about is the movement of Bitcoin to exchanges that are there to take profits and sell. And the reason that they're mentioning this is to warn people that, hey, this might happen in the market and we might see another price dip. So it's basically both sides of the current state of the market. You've got people that are saying that we could see a new all time high within the next few weeks, like before the end of the year. And then you've got these people that are taking a look at the actual blockchain and seeing where Bitcoin is moving and seeing that a lot is being moved to exchanges right now. I'm not saying this to alarm anybody. Even if there were whales that decided to take some profits here at over $50,000, it's not the end of the world, guys. People take profits all the time and Bitcoin is still going to be around. So I only say this to warn people that this is something that could happen. The next article that I wanted to show you guys was posted on Bitcoin Magazine, and this is talking about Colombia's biggest bank to offer Bitcoin trading. Bank Colombia will soon offer its customers the ability to buy and sell Bitcoin through a partnership with Gemini. Now, this is huge for both Colombia and for Gemini Exchange. It's going to allow their patrons to go on to their, their bank's website and purchase Bitcoin through the Gemini Exchange. And this is something that we're starting to see as a trend where a lot of banks are getting their feet wet and deciding, okay, this really is an asset that a lot of people are wanting to start to hold. So we want to be a part of that action. And so this, this is really bullish in itself. Now, obviously, we want to see this happen in more first world countries like the United States, Great Britain, Germany, things like that, that have a lot more robust economies. But this is the start. This is where we have to see it first thrive and get the feel of it before those other bigger economies are willing to step in and do the same thing. The next thing that I wanted to mention is again on Bitcoin Magazine. Bitcoin Card Emily joins Visa's Fast Track program. The fintech expects its prepaid debit card product to launch in the U.S. in quarter one of 2022. Emboli USA, the American arm of European fintech company Emboli, has joined Visa's fintech Fast Track program. Emboli's refillable debit card which can be topped up with Bitcoin and used to pay for goods and services worldwide, will launch in the U.S. next year. So another really awesome article talking about 
the power of Bitcoin and the the way that it is moving forward, we're starting to see a lot of financial technology like debit and credit cards being used with Bitcoin in conjunction with cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. So that's really, really awesome stuff there. We're starting to see more and more of these cards being introduced into the market. And that's a good thing. We want competition. We definitely don't want one card out there to rule them all. So another really, really bullish article there. Okay, the next article that I want to show you guys is again on Bitcoin Magazine, and it was published a few days ago, but it's titled Why Bitcoin Still Has a Long and Prosperous Road Ahead. With the current lull in price, it may seem that Bitcoin is slowing down, but this is simply an illusion. So I'm not going to read this entire article to you guys, but I'll definitely post it in the description below so that you guys can click on it and take a look at it if you want. But there's a lot of really great information in here talking about uh, like what has happened in the past week, uh, ETF uh, conversations that are being had um, in the United States government. Um, there is a lot of regulation talk and um, just a lot of really good information that is relevant to this week and the future of Bitcoin in general. So really, really good stuff coming out of the blockchain space right now. And I have no doubt that the market is just going to keep growing. So for those of you that are brand new to cryptocurrency and trading and things like that, please understand that this is just another dip in the market. It's not like it's the end of the world. We're not going to be seeing the end of Bitcoin anytime soon. So please don't worry. Um, and I know that's probably hard to hear right now because you're probably freaking out like, especially if you put money in right before this recent dip in the market. I completely understand where your head's at. But there is a lot to look forward to and a lot coming up within the next year or two to, to keep your eye on. So that's going to be it for today, though, guys. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and like today's video if you enjoyed it. That's going to be it, though. Crypto Clay out.